So uh, I think we're just a few minutes after 7 o'clock and we are set to begin uh, this pop-up world premiere screening of a new South Side, uh, Seattle South Side Scenes video about the Grandview Dog Park and the Nike Ajax missile site that you may not know used to exist there. Um, I want to introduce at, at the outset, it, by the way, if you're thinking you're here for a feature film and you've really you know, brought supplies, no worries, you're going to get a four and a half minute short film that hopefully you'll really enjoy uh, and then we can go buy supplies afterwards. Uh, I want to introduce though uh, uh, Ashley Comar from Seattle Southside uh, and let her say a, a few words and I, I want to say thank you to you and uh, your organization because as a local uh, filmmaker and historian, the notion that I have a chance to tell some stories that I think are good stories uh, and share them with my own community from which they were birthed is really exciting. And if you think about it, it's not all that common. So the notion that our tourism bureau can engage in a campaign uh, that allows us to tell stories like that is really cool. And I'm really deeply appreciative. So let's give, because we have 300 people in the house tonight. For those of you watching on Facebook Live, um, and thank you for watching. And thank you to the blogs for letting us uh, share this on Facebook Live. Let's give a round of applause to Ashley. Thank you everyone for being here tonight. Uh, I really want to start off by thanking Ken and the Quarter Deck for hosting us here. Mm -hmm. This is a yeah. perfect venue to share our world premiere. Um, and I also want to thank Steve Edmiston for being our amazing producer, filmmaker, local historian. You can tell by his excitement and after you watch the video that he really put all of his creativity and passion into this project and so we're really appreciative of him. And we also want to thank Scott Schaefer for live streaming the event for those of you who are not able to be here today. Um, a little bit of background around the Seattle Southside Regional Tourism Authority. We are a marketing organization to promote tourism to SeaTac, Tukwila, and Des Moines. We want to share the stories about our local businesses, our attractions, our restaurants, the natural beauty to encourage people to travel here, visit, and explore our amazing destination. Uh, as everyone is aware, the, the pandemic was very hard on everyone, especially the hospitality and tourism industry. Um, but one good thing that came out of the pandemic was the development of the Seattle Southside Scenes program. This is a, a community-based storytelling video series that highlights the cultural, arts, and um, historical stories of locations within our region. Um, the, this video of the Nike Missile Site at the Grandview Dog Park is our ninth video as part of the series that we've launched. Um, other locations include the Big Catch statue, the history of bootlegging right here in Des Moines, uh, <laughs> the Angle Lake Light Rail Station art installation, and Spice Bridge in Tukwila, just to name a few. Um, as part of the, the video component, we also have a mobile trail that you can go to each location and learn more about the, the history or the story that happened there. And after you check in at each location, you can get one of these really cool pair of Seattle Southside Seeds socks. <laughs> so um, to learn more about the videos, the stories behind each location, you can go to seattlesouthsidescenes.com. Um, and again, I want to thank everybody for being here, and I hope you enjoy our video. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ashley. Um, that is a planned phone call, by the way. If you, can, if you hear that, 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 we do that on purpose. Um, uh, so our host, our host uh, today is the quarter deck uh, here at the Des Moines Marina, and uh, I'm going to ask uh, Ken Rogers, who is the proprietor of the quarter deck, to come up and 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 say a welcome. And what's really interesting about uh, this as a venue, we're in a tent. I don't know what you can see on Facebook Live, but we're in a new tent that's in the front of the quarter deck. And if we hadn't screened out our walls, you'd have 
a world-class resort view that we've hidden from you, uh, but only for four and a half minutes when the film starts, and then we can go see it again. But we're really excited that Ken agreed to allow us to share his venue with us because we think maybe in the future we can transform this space as creatives into a space where we can share more films and more events in the community yes. uh, without the raindrops on our head or or it, but I, you know uh, I, I I just love finding good space for sharing films. I'm a filmmaker, and this is going to be one of them. So thank you, Ken Rogers. Thank you. Thank you all for coming today. We really appreciate it. As Steve mentioned, it seems uh, ironic that we spent time blocking out the sun because we spent a lot of time wishing for the sun. But just over there is a spectacular view of Puget Sound, the Marine here in Des Moines, and the Olympic Mountains, and the sunset, which is very popular. Seattle Southside has done so much for us, I can't even say enough about that. The Do Something program generated business for us during the pandemic that I can draw a line to. And there aren't very many investments you can do in any kind of advertising or marketing where you can really feel like you're, you've are you got some for the money you're spending. You just kind of throw it out there and hope it comes back. But the Seattle Southside organization was, was so influential in our ability to be able to stay open and to have uh, a reach so that people even as far away as Maple Valley, and there, we had a couple from Enumclaw that saw something on and they came around. They really needed to get out. <laughs> so anyway, my point is the, the organizations that have worked for the small businesses in these communities don't get the acknowledgement that they deserve. And I can tell you for a fact that we have benefited directly from the work that you've done and your staff and whatever resources and effort you put behind us. So thank you very much for that. I'm sure there are a lot of others. We love Steve and his family, and the opportunity to be able to participate in something like this is just nothing but plain old fun. And uh, we're lucky it's a nice day today. But when uh, Catherine and I set out to put this place together, it wasn't to own a coffee shop and a wine bar and a tap room. It was to try to create a prototype for future development down here in the Marine. Whether that happens or not, I'm not sure. But in the meantime, we're going to try to do things like this and others. Uh, as we all know, the pandemic did strange things to everybody's plans. We're trying to get back on course this summer and pick up where we left off with concerts and music here in this little space. And if we can get that going, then we'll start to be like normal again. But thanks for coming. Please uh, uh, thank the Southside people and Steve and, and his family for contributing because it's all about community event. It's not really about commerce in the same way that some places have to make a buck. And we're about celebrating the water and the mountains and the community and appreciate you guys coming down and, and sharing that with us. Thanks, Steve. Okay, if you give a filmmaker a screen and a microphone and his film is going to screen, he's going to give an Oscar speech. This is going to happen because we dream about it. That's not what this is, but I do want to say a couple of thank yous. I know we thank Seattle Southside, but absolutely they're the driver behind this opportunity. I also want to say thank, thank you to uh, South King Media, which is Scott Schaefer and all of the blogs that uh, provides a lot of uh, our ability to share as community what's happening in our community. And it's fantastic that we get to do that. I'm glad that he's doing Facebook Live. You're actually going to be on Facebook Live trying to watch a movie in an environment that has a lot of sunlight. I doubt that the experience will be fantastic on Facebook Live. <laughs> However, the actual video flew on Seattle Southside's uh, site at 7 p.m. So after this event is over, uh, open up that device. Uh, uh, Scott is going to actually post the link to the video. Again, it's four and a half minutes. Uh, you can watch it in that perfect environment for which it was designed as soon as we're done. Uh, I also want to say thanks to people that helped pull this off, this pop-up screening. Bill and Patty Linscott, who always say yes to anything that happens in this community. <laughs> I want to say thanks to Harper Studios from Des Moines who helped us try to mask out some of our sons and did so many things to help us do this. I want to say a special thanks to who's not here, Scott Wilkins, who was our Harper Master at the, at the Marina, who helped us pull this off. I also want to recognize uh, my colleague on this film, Carlos Carra, Carra Media. Carlos, I have this stuff in my head that I want to do. Carlos gets it on the screen. Why don't you wave your hand there? Because it's 
You're the man. Thank you so much, Carlos. And my, my final, uh, I want to thank, now we're going to get into the movie, I want to thank our servicemen and women with the National Guard. You're going to see why in a minute. While this film is about a dog park, it's also really intended to honor the many unrecognized and underappreciated individuals who displayed a heroism that was manifested by their choice, by their choosing to be prepared on our behalf. Okay, they chose to be prepared on our behalf. I think it was a really a stunning service and it's really exciting to go back 50 years and take a look at that. Uh, I also want to say the last time I spoke in public before the pandemic was here at the quarter deck. We were going to launch a speaker's pub, a history pub, and I got to speak for an hour on this very topic. And I think that became the genesis and the opportunity for this story to be included in this particular uh, campaign of local history video. So for me personally, it feels very full circle, and I'm really, really appreciative that I can come back and sort of close that close that loop and tell this story, and we're all here together. That's wonderful. So I'm going to walk over to the computer. I'm going to hit play. Uh, Bill Linscott's going to jump on the sound if we have to raise it. But uh, uh, hang on. Uh, thank you for understanding that we're here in a very light environment. Um, and, and, and appreciating that. I know films will get even better here in the future, but I, I think you'll see enough to enjoy the story and certainly the history is great. Thank you very much. What is the happiest place on earth? Well, if you're a dog, it's probably the city of SeaTac's Grandview Off-Leash Dog Park in Seattle Southside. Grandview has 37 fenced acres of walking trails, forest paths, agility courses, and open fields for play. And of course, the namesake, the Grand View. But while you're enjoying a sprint, sniff, shake, or catch with your Fido Kingsley or Emmy Lou, what you might not know is what actually happened here at Grandview nearly 60 years ago. Or more accurately, what didn't happen here at Grandview. Because here in the 1950s and 60s, this delightful spot was anything but the happiest place on earth. Here, Ajax, Zeus, and Hercules weren't just great dog names borrowed from the gods. They were supersonic, missile-based, air defense systems designed as a last line of defense to bring down overflying Soviet bombers during the years when humankind came closer than any other time to nuclear incineration and in which the United States and the Soviet Union began the greatest arms race in history. And today's Grandview Off-Leash Dog Park here in Seattle Southside was Project Nike Missile Launch Site S. 43. Grandview got the Nike Ajax missiles in 1954, one of 11 Nike sites forming a defense ring around Puget Sound. Here, Site S-43 could launch 30 missiles, each with a 30-mile range carrying three high-yield explosive warheads, ready 24-7. The mission was to stop enemy bombers that escaped interceptor squadrons. A Nike site commander said, we are the goaltenders. But how can we even begin to understand the tension that must have existed here at Site S-43? And what about in late October 1962, during the Cuban Missile Crisis, when the Soviets were building missile bases only 90 miles away from the United States? All ships of any kind bound for Cuba, from whatever nation or port, Will if found to contain cargoes of offensive weapons be turned back? It shall be the policy of this nation to regard any nuclear missile launched from Cuba against any nation in the Western Hemisphere as an attack by the Soviet Union on the United States, requiring a full retaliatory response upon the Soviet Union. The word is things got edgy at Nike Ajax sites. One Nike site colonel was quoted, we were told our life expectancy was five minutes. By the time we launched everything, 
we were going to be gone. All that we were going to do was slow them down. A Nike Launch Bay crewman agreed. We would have probably been the first target that they would have taken out. There were no guns in our possession here whatsoever, so we couldn't fire back. Our job was over, and we just figured it out. You are the target. But we know exactly what didn't happen at Grandview. We did not go to war, and the Cuban Missile Crisis ended with a secret, behind-the-scenes deal. We've come a long way from that tense time, and it just might be that the perfect successor in every way to the machines of the Cold War is a vast off-leash dog park where war games are turned into chase games, fetch, and never-ending exploration. Come see for yourself at SeaTac's Grandview Off-Leash Dog Park in Seattle Southside. And with apologies to Master Shakespeare, let slip the dogs of play. For more must-see Seattle Southside scenes, go to seattlesouthsidescenes.com. One is, oh, thank you for, for sitting through that four and a half minutes, and hopefully the notion of service, you know, through uh, tense times uh, when nothing happens, it's, it's still amazing service, and one of the learnings for me was that. I actually was able to, all those photographs, those black and white photographs, are actually photographs from the National Guard that I was able to find of our Nike Ajax missile site in Grandview. Those are not from all over the country. Those are all photos from our site, um, which is I, I thought was kind of extraordinary. And um, I think it's just a great story. So even if you don't have a dog, go check out the Grandview Dog Park and sort of feel the history there. Um, uh, everything that happened uh, uh, before, you know, 50 years ago or what? Uh, 60, what's the math on that? 1962 to present, so it's quite some time ago. Anyway, um, anybody have a question for me uh, as a filmmaker, a storyteller? Anybody have a question for Ashley uh, uh, on behalf of Seattle Southside as far as a campaign? Or is it beer time, which is, you know, we got three choices and they're all correct. <laughs> uh, yes, Ken? What's next for you, Steve? Uh, well, there's a whole bunch of things going on. Uh, I, I don't know as far as the Seattle Southside campaign. Um, we've been actively, uh, Scott Schaefer and I have been really actively developing a film that was, um, that is the same story as one of the films that's in the Seattle Southside campaign about bootlegging in our South King County area. Uh, and particularly, you know, the rum running King Roy Olmsted. And so one of the videos uh, on the scenes campaign is really a video of the final arrest of the rum running king here on the docks in Des Moines, um, or Des Moines, you know, I always get, yeah, I'm still working on that. Um, um, and, and so it's a really phenomenal story, but uh, as a feature film project, as opposed to a five minute, you know, sort of short film uh, project, uh, we've been working on that for some time. Um, there's a whole bunch of things going on, Ken. Uh, but uh, you know, there's always what, one thing I've learned as a we call it micro history, uh, and I'm not a historian by training. Um, uh, maybe that's apparent. Maybe it's not. Uh, my dad was a historian. He taught uh, high school at Thai High School for 30 uh, plus years, uh, teaching history. Uh, but um, in micro history, the, the the idea is you can pick a small thing. You can pick a person maybe a person and a single event. And, and you, anybody, any lay person without a PhD can basically decide to become the world's expert on that. And you can dig in and you can find out what's there. And that's sort of this notion of micro history. And so it's very uh, democratizing, I guess is the word. It's very uh, liberating in terms of people can come and, and do this. And I'm finding that our community here in Des Moines and in Seattle Southside and all of our uh, you know, sort of South End communities, the number of great stories here is stunning. It, it, we just have some really great stories to tell. And so the chance to tell them, and that's when we started this talk, was uh, you know, an organization like Seattle Southside, who 
you know, wants people to come in, into this area, wants to experience the things we have to offer, the ability to tether that to good story is, is exciting. It's, it's nice for me as a storyteller and filmmaker to have that chance to do it. So that's the answer. Thank you again, Ashley. Anybody else? Beer time? Okay, on Facebook Live, you should go to the refrigerator and have one more. And, uh, and we can all go to the quarter deck and celebrate. And thank you all for coming to the pop-up screening. World premiere. You just went to a world premiere. Save your ticket. Save your ticket. I'm Ashley Comar. I'm the Vice President of Marketing and Communications for Seattle Southside Regional Tourism Authority. Talk a little about this project. How did it come to be? So the Seattle Southside Scenes Program was really developed to start sharing the stories of locations throughout the whole region that you may have, you may go to the location and think, oh, this is an interesting spot, but you don't have any idea of what happened here, or, or the story behind how this art installation was created, or the culture that was a part of creating this dish that you're about to eat. So um, we really wanted to get a little bit deeper within these locations and share the story of our community to make it um, more interesting and a great place to experience when you come visit. Great idea. How many stories are there now? There are now nine stories now that we have the, the Grand View Dog Park. Talk about some of the other ones other than this. So we also have the um, Spice Bridge in Tukwila. It's a, a, an incubation program for um, restaurateurs of women and um, immigrants who are developing their own restaurants so you can go taste um, up to eight different restaurants uh, and the food is amazing it's from all over the world um, we also have <clears throat> the Angle Lake light rail station there's an art installation there that is comprised of thousands of pieces of acrylic that make up this uh, beautiful cloud that shimmers when the wind blows and um, we have the story of, from the artist herself talking about how she came up with the idea, how it, there are several different iterations of it, and then the actual installation of it. And then we also have the Big Catch statue, which is located here in Des Moines. And it's a, at first glance, it just looks like a man holding a fish. And uh, if you look a little closer, it's a little bit scandalous. Uh, so I encourage everyone to come down and look at the statue and also go to the website to watch the video and learn more. And learn about the scandal, the uh, controversy over yes. it. And then, of course, there's the Maury Island incident also. That is right, yes. Yeah, the Maury Island incident that happened right over here. We have the mural that you can go visit and see the actual depiction of the event and um, learn about the first um, man in black sighting that happened here. Right. So you work with Steve Edmiston. Uh, tell us, what, your, what are your thoughts on him as a storyteller? Oh, we love Steve. He is a great storyteller. He has so many insights into the area that you know we we would not have access to without him. And he does all the research, um, all the photography photos that he collected for this video alone is incredible. And just the passion that he shows for each project, it really comes across in the videos. Yeah, he's a great researcher. Yeah, he loves it. So what's next after the? What are there any upcoming new videos that we yes. should look for? Well, we have a couple of in the works, um, but this is, really is a community-based program. So we've been working with SoCo Culture, our, our local arts commissions, to help us find these stories. Um, and so if there's anybody out there who knows of other stories that um, we can help share, we'd love to hear them. We're, our plan is to develop, to develop around three to four per year and um, release them. And I actually was reading some of the comments on one of your posts today and found out a new one related to the Grandview Dog Park. Great. about motorcycle races that happen Oh yeah, right the there. hill thing. Yeah. yeah, the race. I've never heard that one. Me before. either, so I'll have to look more into that. Maybe Excellent. that's something we can do next. Okay, in closing, tell us what the website is to see the other stories. Yes, it is seattlesouthsidescenes.com. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. So good to see you. You too.